Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dad Vice TV, and I am live on World Kidney Day, which is also Pi Day 314 of 2024. Hey there, Don. Great to have you back with us. Hey, everybody. So we're just going to do a hangout here. I've got some free time. It's World Kidney Day. Let's have a great chat. Go ahead, post in questions, um, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Hey, David, how you doing? And I hope you guys all saw some of the recent videos that I've posted. Had um, Justin and Michael here a few days ago. They're over in Italy right now. Um, great, inspiring story. Justin ended up with kidney cancer, had his kidney removed, had some other problems. But those two are making the most of life and now traveling the world. They've got their own YouTube channel, sharing their adventures. Remember, right, they posted a video earlier today, eating lunch at an amazing Italian place. Oh, I'm so jealous. So much great food over there. Hey there, Rosa. <laughs> and Don says, woohoo, everyone. I love the energy, Don. Let's see. Paulette says, because of you, I started adding low sodium soy sauce to my chicken, boo, beef and vegetable, um, delish, still don't know if it's safe. So sodium is the number one thing that I always look for when I'm looking on a package. I should also be looking at sugar and carbs, um, but sodium is one of those things. You definitely wanna find out what your limit is. What does your doctor say you should be shooting for? Is it, you know, 1800 milligrams, 1600 milligrams, maybe even more than that. And just try not to exceed that in a day. Now, occasionally, if you do exceed something, get a little too much potassium, a little too much sodium, a little too, too much of something else, you know, occasionally it's not going to hurt you. It's, it's just if you constantly do that, if you're eating lots and lots of something you shouldn't have too much of, then it's going to start, you know, putting some stress on your kidneys, and that's what we want to avoid. Uh, Petra says, it's so great to see you. Hey, awesome to see you here in the chat with us. Hey there, Debbie. Hey there, Hector. I'm going to try to say hi to as many people as I can out here. I don't know if I said hi to Susan. And Hey, Sandy's back. Great to have you here, Sandy, with us um, on this World Kidney Day. Now, one thing I also wanted to mention was coming up the week after next on the 27th, Dr. Rowe is going to be here. We're going to do another live show, and he has a lot of great um, new research, new data, new treatments for people with kidney disease, especially the earlier stages like CKD3, which is the majority. You know, it's such a big um, stage right there. There is a lot of new stuff, and there is a ton of research. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Su Suhul? Sujul? Hey, great to have you here. Um, there is new research talking about how the EGFR calculations, and they change all the time, how off they are. <laughs> they There is a big study where they tested those, and they compared it to another test that's more accurate, and they discover the test that the formula we're using right now for calculating our EGFR has a lot of leeway and accuracy. And where that comes into importance is when to start dialysis. We don't want to get on dialysis early because the data shows us that starting it early does not help. It actually can hurt because it's putting a lot of stress on your heart. Um, and that's why it's important to work with your doctor when it does come time to start dialysis and look at, is there anything you can't control? If you've got too much fluid, you're retaining fluid, there's ways they can help. But if the medication, the treatments don't work, that's when they say, okay, now we've tried the medical things that we can do. Now we need to look at dialysis. That way you don't start too early. Don says, uh, if you like soy sauce, and need lower sodium, try Coconut Secret. I've not heard of that. I will make note of that and see. Uh, let's see. Dale asks, when you do start the SG or SGLT2 meds, 
when the doctor says or when to get a certain stage. Well, so it's not really based on stage. Remember, these stages are kind of made up just to have a gap to throw people in. And then the EGFR calculation that throws you into a stage or places you in a stage is it's accurate like grenades are accurate. It's not accurate like a, a bow and arrow is accurate. It's in the vicinity when you get your GFR. Um, it, it fluctuates, plus, you know, it could easily be off. The new data is showing quite a bit up or down. So for your doctor, it's going to come down to the current treatments, medications they're giving to you. How are they working? And when do they think they need to modify them or add an additional medication to you? If we look, here I'm going to bring up uh, Dadvice TV right here. If we go to Dadvice TV, I'm going to scroll over resources and I go to uh, my blood pressure medications. <clears throat> I was just reviewing this with somebody the other day. This is what I take to keep my blood pressure under control. That is a lot of pills. And some of them are in the morning and some of them are in the evening. Um, my kidneys just got so bad because of all the damage to them um, that it takes this many pills now to keep me under control. And I've added probably one pill in the last two years to this. Um, and at some point in the future, I'll probably have to add another pill. Um, but I, my blood pressure, that is so, so important to me. And that is why I look at sodium as the first thing when I eat a meal. I try, I don't try, I keep my sodium under 600 milligrams a meal. Um, if I find something, um, there are a few pre-made things for when we're all in a hurry and we need something pre-made. I find a few things that are like 560 milligrams for something that I can make pretty easily. Maybe it's at work for lunch. Um, I get excited about that. 560 milligrams for lunch. Woohoo! That is awesome. I just got to watch snacks. Um, at work, it's easy to avoid snacks because I'm busy and I'm running around. But when I'm at home, especially when the kids are off, ooh, those snacks are easy to um, add up, you know, add into my diet. All right, Debbie says, do you eat pizza? Any low sodium? Oh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. I love pizza. I absolutely love pizza. But, oh, it is torture for me. Um, when I was first diagnosed, I was able to eat a few slices of a, a thin crust. The problem is the sauce loaded with sodium. Um, and then a lot of the toppings, especially the meat toppings, loaded with sodium. I love pizza where when you're done eating the pizza, you have to use a fork to eat all the toppings that fell off. That's the kind of pizza I love. As a matter of fact, my wife brought home from a local place here called Uncle Andy's. Makes an amazing tasting pizza with a garlic crust. And my kids love it with extra um sauce because that way when you microwave it the next day to heat it up it it's much much better than just regular sauce but i had to limit myself to a single slice and not the big slice i was looking for which is the smallest slice on here and i had to limit myself just to one slice because the sodium you know first i was eating it for dinner and when i get too much sodium in a meal it was just one piece i wake up constantly throughout the night very very thirsty so i'll get some water because i got it. i'm thirsty and then what happens i'm waking up half an hour 45 minutes later gotta pee and i'm thirsty so you you know i pee i get a little i try to drink as little as possible to quench my thirst go back to bed less than an hour later i'm back up so if i eat something like pizza um i limit myself to one slice and I have to not eat it at dinner. I have to have it for lunch. That way I am not up all night. But the problem is that's when most people buy pizza. You're watching the game. Football season was on. 
the games were late, order a pizza because it's easy to get it in here. And even though I only have one slice, oh, all that sodium so late at night just would get to me. Hey there, Hector. Great to have you here. Um, let's see what else. we. Oh, more things coming in. Let's see. Um, Rosa Branch. I love fish. Oh, very good. You got all those good fish oils in there. Sometimes fried with olive oil. Olive oil, very good. Olive oil and avocado oil, good for us. Um, just got to watch how much you use because that's a great way to add extra calories for those that are trying to maintain or gain weight. Um, if you're like me and you're trying to lose weight, we got to be a little light-handed on those um, oils. Let's see, say you eat mostly chicken and fish, occasionally bacon and eggs. Is this okay? Yeah. So what matters on a diet is it's not really these individual items. And a lot of times I get emails or I see posts on social media, is broccoli good for my kidneys? Is this good for my kidneys? Is celery good for my kidneys? Those Your kidneys never see the celery, broccoli, or what you eat. It all gets broken down into the basic nutrients and minerals and things that are in it. And the ones that get absorbed to your blood, now your kidney sees those because it, it probably has to help manage those and remove you know the excess water because you got too much sodium, et cetera. Um, so you want to eat heart healthy. And I know that sounds odd, but it's my kidneys. Why am I eating heart healthy? If you eat for your heart, your kidneys will be happy. And kidney disease is actually a huge, huge risk factor for heart disease. So that's what we really got to watch out for is our hearts. That's why things like the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, and those heart healthy diets are often recommended for kidney patients to, to eat. And that makes it easier to find books, find recipes. You can go and Google thousands and thousands of recipes out there for the Mediterranean diet, for the DASH diet, for their heart healthy diets. But what you want to do, Rosa, is look at your labs and figure out, you know, look at, the, you know, is there anything you have too much of when your labs are too high outside of the normal range? Those things you want to cut down on. So if your sodium is really high, you want to cut down on your sodium. Now you can still add salt. You can go, you know, buy you some salt. I like to use the, the salt grinder and I use um, pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, there really is no noticeable difference between the salts. Pick the salt that you like. The differences are so minute, they don't matter. Um, but I like the pink Himalayan sea salt and I like it in the grinder because I'm grinding it and it gets on my food. It has a little bit of a, uh, not quite an earthy, but a minerally taste. And I like that with the salt when I do use it. But most of that too much salt comes from the highly processed foods, the fast foods, things like that. So when you're eating out, you're going through a drive through window or going to some kind of fast food or you're getting a TV dinner or a pre-made meal at the grocery store, that's where you got to really watch your sodium because that's where most of our sodium that we, we consume comes from. It's from there. It's not from at home adding a normal amount of salt. Now, if you're screwing off the top of the salt shaker and <laughs> it's falling like Niagara Falls, you're getting too much there. Um, but you're, it sounds like you're eating great. Um, and you know, you don't have to give up meat. Let's see. What did you put in there? Um, and, and hopefully you're eating some vegetables in there with your foods. Try to make your, your balance, your diet balance, find out how much sodium you should have. Oh, and as I was saying earlier, if something's too high, you just cut back on that in your diet. If something's too low, like potassium, so many people restrict potassium and their doctor never told them to and potassium is important for our heart remember we're eating heart healthy we're eating for our heart our heart um if your potassium's too low add a banana add some more potatoes to your meal add avocado add things that are high in potassium to keep you within the range that's what we're trying to do in our labs we're just trying to stay within the range we're not trying to be you know oh no no potassium so no tomatoes no Bananas, no, no, no. We're just trying to stay in the range, trying not to get too much, not to get 
too little. Um, hey there, David. Let's see. Love this show. Made me more comfortable. Was so scared when I heard I had it. Uh, when she heard she had uh, CKD. That is completely normal. So as you guys know, hold on, I'm going to bend over and grab something on the floor right here. I was supposed to set these up on my desk. Oh, let me, I can get off of my uh, <laughs> my website. Let me come real big here on the picture. Um, most of you know I've written some books. You may not realize how many I've written. I took all the scripts and all the research that I had done over the years. Um, now five and a half years of, of doing this. And I've written them into books. And the the first one, there's four. this is the fourth edition of it because I keep going back and updating it. Conquering kidney disease, um, and then I did another one. Conquering the kidney diet. This is a lot thicker. I cannot believe how much I wrote in these books. Now I did not sit down and write this entire book all in like one summer or something. I took all the notes I've written, all the things talking with the renal dietitians, and all the research I've done that I saved stuff, and just added it here to the book. And then I also did this one for families, friends, loved ones um, of people with kidney disease. It's a much shorter book. Um, kind of gives them the basics of it, what's, um, what all is there. But these right here, when I was first diagnosed, I was scared to death. I had no clue what to do. Um, and that's normal. And I explained it in here. And I'm now working on a fourth book. Um, which is really more of a memoir. These are close to what would be considered textbooks. You know, they have some, they have some some of my stories in there, but they're really more of like, hey, here's what you need to know. Here's what matters. Here's how to understand things. Here's how I look at it and what I focus on and things like that. But I am working one that is going to tell uh, my story. You, know, you guys know most of my story. You don't know it all though. Um, especially when I was in the ICU that week, what it was like being diagnosed, being scared, the things I, I thought about and I had to come to terms with. Um, there's just so much. It was so overwhelming and it was scary. And when that book is out, Rose, um, you'll see we, we almost all of us go through the same thing. We're all scared to death. We go online, Dr. Google and Nurse Facebook, are pretty scary when you're looking for stuff because it's so focused on dialysis. And when you look at the news and things like that, what gets you to watch? It's not the lovely, happy stories usually. It's the scary ones. You know, you're sitting there, you're watching TV and the commercial for the 10 o'clock news comes on and it says, there's something in your fridge you're about to eat that could kill you tonight. We'll tell you in three hours after you eat your dinner. You know, so scare tactics that get the the views and get the eyeballs. And so many of the websites out there lean into the scary part. So it makes it, when we're doing our research, we're first diagnosed, it makes it very scary. But that book's going to take me a while. I started writing it. Um, it's a very emotional experience. These ones were all easy. This is just technical stuff. Um, and it's like facts. The other ones are like, going back and the emotions and I have a personal journal I kept and remembering like even the first day getting out of the ICU and how difficult basic things were and some of the challenges and the scary things that I had to think about and all of a sudden now I'm planning stuff I'm like okay well what happens to the house my kids my wife um, do they know where all the bank account things are do they know what I have through work in case something happens to me, you know, you're going through all that. But anyway, that book will be coming out probably 2025 and it's going to be uh, a good story, but you're not alone, Rosa. Um, yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy that when it does come out and I am having fun writing. I never thought I would do it. And when I sat here and went through all my notes, I'm like, Holy cow. You know, now over 300 videos and that's a lot of notes in there all right let's see sandy says brown lentils is a good substitute for ground meat awesome uh, made some lentil spaghetti sauce and substituted lentils 
for ground meat. Very good. Awesome. And um, Sandy, if you haven't, and everyone else out there, make sure and go join the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group ran by Jen Hernandez, renal dietitian. She's on here every month. We do a live Q&A. There are lots of great recipes and ideas like that. This kind of idea that'd be fantastic to share in there for others and get more ideas because there's so many substitutions we can do that are, you know, you may not have thought about or you may think, well, it doesn't taste good, but it really is. And I'm going to tell you one that I discovered. I've talked about it before. Um, if you can not have lots of potassium and you have to restrict potatoes and you're like me, you love potatoes. I absolutely love them. Um, before we moved up here to Detroit, we had a grill outside and my wife would grill up chopped red skin potatoes with olive oil on it and some seasoning. And oh my goodness, it was like just amazingly good. Um, but a great substitute is uh, cooked radishes. And what I do is I make them in the air fryer. I take the radish and you chop the ends off. You got to chop the ends off just because it doesn't cook right. If it's all got the solid red, you need the, the cut part so that it's open, maybe in slice it a little bit slightly in the middle. And you throw them in the your air fryer and I put it on the French fry setting. I just keep an eye on it. It doesn't take long. A mine, it's probably 380 degrees. Um, it's probably like 16 minutes or something. And they taste amazing. They do not taste like radishes. The texture, the the taste, all that changes. And it tastes so similar to little red skin potatoes that were cooked out on the grill. So it's fantastic to find those great substitutions. Um, Susan says, I know everyone is different. That is true. The whole foods plant-based lifestyle has kept me stable. Stage 3A for over nine years. Congratulations. That's awesome, Susan. Uh, she was born with one kidney and you're 55. You and I are almost the same age. I keep dying the gray. It's starting to, to show up a little bit right there. I keep trimming my hair, keep it short. I'm trying to Hold on to those 40s looks while I'm in my early 50s. Um, but that is that is fantastic. A plant-based plant -based diet has been proven to be so helpful. And it's also very similar to a Mediterranean diet. And speaking of Mediterranean diet, you know, when I've looked a lot into that and I've looked a lot into retirement. Like, where do I want to be, you know, spending a lot of my time, it's going to be around the Mediterranean. So, you know, a lot of Italy. I want to go over there, tons of time. I, mean, I want to visit, visit, visit like crazy. You know, the ruins, the entire country of Italy is like just ruins everywhere. So you can spend a lifetime there seeing them. And I am looking forward to eating a Mediterranean, fresh um, fruits, fresh vegetables, you know, picking them up every day at the market, making a meal or going out and eating. Um, and it's going to be one of those things that's going to help me keep my kidneys happy, protect my heart, and extend my life. When you look at those countries around the Mediterranean, especially Italy, like Sicily and all that, there's blue zones. And blue zones are where people live really long. And it is the, the lifestyle. It's the clean air. It's walking. They're out walking all over the place. And there's a lot of steps like in Italy. Oh my goodness. There's steps everywhere, but it's good for you. It's going to be good for me to be walking a lot more and uh, using a train to get around and probably an electric bike so I can pedal some. And then when there's a hill, you know, pedal a little bit less. But I do not plan to, uh, when I'm traveling through Europe, to have a car. All right. Paulette says I made green pea. Sealy, and I'm hoping I pronounced that right today with cauliflower, evo, and garlic wasn't too bad. Doable, very good, very good. Um, oh, Sandy, my problem is candy, any sour candy. <gasps> I'm in the same boat with you, Sandy, at least the last three years. Um, sweets or carbs that's my weakness, something that is sweet, and I do like sour stuff. 
My daughter absolutely loves sour candy. So it's all over the place. We have tons of it around. Um, not that you know, my daughter, she's like a pencil. She's so thin and active and running around all the time. She loves that um, sour candy. So it's very tempting. Um, luckily, I can only eat a little bit because it does kind of irritate my gums. But yeah, candy is a problem. And, you know, what I found that works when there's things that I shouldn't be eating this is difficult, especially with family, is try to keep it away from here. Keep it out of the house so I'm not tempted. My wife right now has a whole bunch of Hershey bars, you know, the Hershey's chocolate, which I absolutely love the Hershey's chocolate. That milk chocolate just tastes so good. Um, she has tons of them in the kitchen. She got some from an event or something. And every time I'm going over there and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get some popcorn. And I open the cupboard, I see them. And it is so tempting. And I have done so good. I have not eaten them. Um, but, oh, it is tempting. If they were not in the house, they wouldn't be tempting at all. Um, Deb says we are told to keep our saturated fat in check. But yet we hear that we should eat nuts and seeds. Well, nuts and seeds, not that you should eat them but they can fit into your diet. It can be part of it. Um, nuts seem to add up fast in saturated fat. Oh my goodness. You are so right. They do. Um, it all comes down to portion control. That is the secret to the entire diet is portion control. And that's where we're saying things like, Hey, if you could only have this many, this much sodium, you got to limit your portions till you don't exceed that limit. When it comes to nuts and seeds, it is difficult. Um, now, so I, for the most part, use a lot of sunflower seeds when I cook. It gives things a crunch. A tiny little sliver of fiber. I use almonds, um, sliced almonds. I absolutely hate almonds. Um, but they're good in meals. Even stir fry or mix them with a salad sliced real thin. Um, and those I always just buy sliced. I, I'm not going to. I don't have the patience to slice them and probably the dexterity to not cut my fingers uh, slicing them really thin. Um, and I will sometimes have like some pecans or some walnuts, but not very often. It's mostly sunflower seeds. And I eat those all the time. Add them into something, just kind of give it a little more oomph. Um, even a small like... Um, uh, a TV dinner, and those come in a wide range. There's some that are minimally processed, lightly processed, all the way to greatly processed. But some of those, you know, the lightly or the minimally processed ones, um, you don't get very much with them. It's sticking with like the sodium target that I have for a meal. So I'll bulk it up with some unsalted sunflower seeds, add those in there, and <laughs> it, it probably sounds not delicious but i've i kind of gotten used to it i will add sunflower seeds to practically anything um i don't eat ice cream um and i wouldn't add them to that but pretty much everything else if i'm making something or i have something i throw some sunflowers or some almonds on there's like yeah a little bit of extra fiber a little bit of extra roughage for me you know so it really comes down deb to the um, portion control and the better nuts are going to be very, very small portions for the day. All right. Hello, James. My mom, GFR is 23. One foot is swollen and constant knee pain. So the swelling, the, it's water retention. That That's a sign that the her kidneys are on you know, the more serious side of loss of function. Definitely, you know, tell your mom, go see your doctor, see what they recommend. Uh, there may be medications for her. There may be um, like a diuretic that they can add to her medications. Don't try to self-medicate. Um, you may read things like dandelion tea out there is a diuretic, but it is not good for most kidney patients. So don't try to do it yourself. That's definitely something where things are starting to get serious, you know, the symptoms, but there are treatments for that. And I remember when the, in the beginning, when my feet and ankles and 
the lower half of my legs would swell. It was just it was unbelievable how they looked. Um, and it made it very difficult walking, taking each step. I felt as if, almost as if when I was resting or sitting, and this is not what it what happened, but it's what it felt like. It almost felt like my skin had hardened, like it built a, a shell, and then I'm walking and trying to break that shell and get the skin flexible again. It, it was pretty painful. Um, and I have bad knees. My knees are bad from being young and just being a kid and doing all sorts of stupid stuff uh, <laughs> and not thinking about it. Um, so with the knees, I use a compression sock on my knees whenever I have problems or if I'm going to go somewhere with a lot of walking or steps and steps are my downfall. Um, I can go down. them perfectly fine going up them. I got to kind of be careful because if I twist it a little bit, my knee, it, it goes and then I'm, uh, in pain for a couple weeks as it recovers, but a compression sock for your knee. Um, has worked great for me. And here, at least in, in the States, I don't know where you're at. Um, you can pick those up at like a dollar store or five below. If you go to other places, they're so overpriced. Um, and there is a difference in quality. You know, you probably do get better quality ones, but I'll find some for just like three bucks and they work fine. And when I travel and stuff, if I lose one, no biggie. I've been wearing it and it was only three dollars. And you wash them and they come out fine. Um, you know, they they last and last and last. It's not like they're going to fall apart real real quick. Um, hello from, is that Cleveland, RJ? That's where my wife is from. She's going, her parents are there too. Um, we, we don't go to Cleveland too often, but we do go to Sandusky, which has that big... Um, Cedar Point, and uh, every time we've gone there so far, it's been in the winter months when they're closed, but usually that's like a halfway point. We can meet my wife's parents and spend a few hours together, and that way they're not driving real far because we're north of Detroit, um, but my kids are looking forward to going to Cedar Point soon. Let's see, Yvonne says, where is Jen? Jen relocated down to Florida. And she is usually here the first Tuesday of every month. And we do a live Q&A for half an hour with her. And she also does a lot of broadcasts on her Facebook page, which is great. All right, let's see. Mav says, hey, James, love the channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. What do you take for aches and pains? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Okay, good. And you say you don't want to take things like ibuprofen. Very good, because it's not good for your kidneys. Now, doctors say we can take some ibuprofen. I don't touch it. No. That's what got me. I, it, it, it was It's like a snowball effect. You go downhill and it gets bigger and bigger and worse. That was my snowball that got me started going down um, and did so much damage to my kidneys threw my blue blood pressure through the roof, which just did more damage. And then I started getting sick and, you know, I was vomiting and stuff, got me dehydrated, which gave me an AKI, an acute kidney injury, on top of my CKD, which is what pushed me over the limit to uh, kidney failure. Um, I use acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, um, but I don't use it very often. As a matter of fact, I took, I took one pill yesterday. I don't take two pills. I just take one. Um, acetaminophen is what they recommend. From the how much I've learned about pain meds and what they do to your body, I don't want to take lots of them. Um, now, if you have a headache, here is something I discovered that I, I cannot believe how well it works. They have these things, these pads that go on your head. Um, they kind of stick to your head. You can put them in a refrigerator um, and they get cold and you peel them off and they stick to your head. I don't know how in the world they do it, but they work. The headache goes away and you just feel so good. You're like, oh, it's cool. And it's it. the headache will start dissipating almost instantly once you put that on. There's no chemicals or anything on there and they're reusable until the stickiness goes away. 
Um, but they're made of like a real thin gel and they get cold in the refrigerator where it's 37 degrees and you put them on your forehead and it works amazing. You, you can also put them in different areas where you have some pain. I've never done that. I've used them for headaches and it's been fantastic. But since I've got my blood pressure under control, it is so, so rare. I hope you guys can't hear one of my dogs barking. Um, it is so, so rare for me to get a headache. Um, but if I want to, like I, you know, I was feeling a little under the weather, a little stuffy and had a headache and I was working. So I took one, um, acetaminophen, however many milligrams there is in one. I want to guess 500, but I could be wrong. All right. How many ounces of meat per meal do you eat, James? So I've gone beyond, I used to measure everything and it used to be a serving was three ounces of meat. I can't believe I still remember that. Um, but I have gotten to the point now where my kidneys have gotten, you know, they recovered so much. Um, well, that's relative. For me, they've recovered so much. The GFR still bounces between the high 20s and, and the low 30s. Um, so I'm somewhere on that, you know, three, four stage border right there. Um, now I just, you know, I don't overdo it, uh, but I don't measure. I used to measure I mean, every single thing. My wife uses the scale, the food scale for her shipping scale now. Um, but I probably stick in that three to five ounces of meat um, if I'm eating a meat-based meal. Now tonight for dinner, I, bu I bought it the Kroger. There's these little tiny salads they have that are three for $11. Um, I was there last night. I bought three of them. One was going to be for dinner last night, one for lunch today, and one for dinner tonight. Um, and I ate one for dinner last night. Today, work was just so busy. We're approaching the weekend. I was just going to town working, and then I looked up. and like, hey, it's almost 5 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Um, so I ate two of those little tiny salads for my dinner. I don't use a dressing that comes with them. I um, buy some Marzetti poppy seed dressing that I, I put on there. I like those or some Italian dressings because they're, they're fairly on the healthy side. Um, so not every meal has meat. But when I do eat it, it is probably in that closer to five ounces of it. Let's see, some doctors don't put you on a limit of protein. Um, yeah, I, I would, limiting protein is not always a requirement. It's going to depend really on how you're doing. We got to make sure we don't get malnourished and we don't lose muscle mass. Um, protein is good for us. It is a, a very important for our body. And the protein we eat is not the same as the protein we're peeing. Um, so eating more protein doesn't mean you're going to pee out more protein if you have protein in your urine, but the source of protein can influence the, the load on your kidneys. You know, if it's red meat based, especially it's going to impact, not only will it cause your kidneys to go into hyperfiltration, which is something they do naturally, which makes them work harder for a little bit. So now you got to worry about inflammation, um, which then cuts down to how well they are, but also it impacts your body's pH balance, which then your kidneys are, you know, they're, they're helping control that. Now they got to do something else in addition to the other stuff. So some of those just put extra work on the kidneys and it depends on, you know, the source of it and how your individual body is doing. My doctors never gave me a protein limit. Um, as a matter of fact, in the very beginning, it was, it was difficult for me to eat the, the a kidney friendly diet, and my dietitian understood that because I went from you know every single meal instead of drinking water. Here's my water with true lemon in it. Um, instead of drinking that, I was grabbing a two liter of Dr Pepper. I haven't had a Dr Pepper now in like five and a half years. Um, I was able to go cold turkey on that one, but going cold turkey and changing my diet overnight from every meal practically coming from a drive through window or some sit down restaurant um, to making meals and being healthier. Um, 
my dietitian understood it wouldn't happen. So she helped me kind of migrate slowly from one thing to the, to the other. It started with the, okay, we're going to go to, I think it was 2,200 milligrams of sodium, James, and we're going to do this and you're going to look for this. So it was, I started slowly getting things in alignment with where I was supposed to be. And I was doing substitutions. She's like, okay, I love the McChicken sandwich at McDonald's. So she helped me come up with my fake McChicken with a, um, a plant-based chicken patty. Um, and I just slowly migrated to now eating more vegetables and um, fruit. Before, those were all just toppings for a hamburger. They were never... Uh, a side item or a main part of my meal. Now I get all excited. I just went to a buffet, um, which I know is going to shock you. You're like, what? You can go to a buffet. Um, drove up to Windsor, Canada, Mandarin Buffet oh, in the Devonshire Mall. It's amazing. Um, it reminds me of the good old days in Vegas when you went to the giant buffet with, and the food was really good. Um, but they had... A, I just lost my point. What I was going to say. Oh, all the, the plant-based stuff. Um, they had so many vegetables, like grilled vegetables, zucchini and all that. Oh my God. I'm just loading up my plate with all this. And it looked, it was all colorful. It was all vegetables and cooked and the salads and did all these different, um, they called them salads, but made out of fruits and vegetables. And I didn't eat any meat. It was delicious. I this, had a great meal there. My kids love it because my daughter loves sushi. And they have um, apparently really good sushi. <laughs> oh, Rosa says she eats salads and veggie platters weekly. Oh, whenever I go to Kroger. and I'm, oh, Some of you may be rich. I'm not rich. So when I go to Kroger, I'm always... Walking past the veggie section, looking at those platters, looking for the ones with the, with the clearance sticker on it. Because usually they're like $15, but I can get it for like 4 or $5 when they're on the, the clearance. So I go in the evening when they do that, and I look for those on purpose. Um, and I look for the salads that are on clearance. Because um, I'm going to eat them in a, in a day or two. I go there quite often. Um, but I love veggie platters. So do my kids. They They grew up loving veggie platters. I probably have like one of the few kids in the world that when they were babies, we go someplace, they love broccoli. They love cauliflower. They love carrots, cucumber. They're just veggies. They love those things. Uh, my wife was very good at not getting them used to eating all the other common foods that we give to kids. All right. Susan says, I haven't lost any weight. Hey, if you, you say you stayed the same weight, that is great. It is so easy to put on weight and extremely difficult to lose it. Um, and my, the company I worked for, when they closed down their Cincinnati office and all of a sudden I was unemployed um, and trying to figure out what to do, it was easy for me to put on weight because food was kind of my safety net to help me get through uh, some of those difficult days. So it's great that you can maintain your weight. That is fantastic. And the research shows Okay, we we know we should lose weight, and there's a lot of benefits of losing weight. But the research shows that that is not the number one priority for kidney patients. Number one is that blood pressure, and if you are diabetic, blood sugar, but blood pressure is like it's like here on the list, and losing weight is like down here, and then there's some other things. Um, and I'm happy because of that. You know, I've gained weight, and my labs still look good. Now I'm trying to walk more and do more and things are just so busy. It's, it's hard to get time to do that. I got to make time. Um, but I'm glad to know that um, being overweight is not good. It's not healthy, but it's not the worst thing. You know, there's other things that are more important. Okay, Michael says, hi there. I'm a big fan, CKD stage four. Doctor tells you to consider a transplant in a few years. So, that's a difficult thing to talk about, Michael. Um, so I, you know, for the longest time, I qualified for the transplant list. And I thought about it. Should I get on the transplant list? 
Um, and, you know, should I get a preemptive transplant? Um, Dr. Rowe recommends if you're young, preemptive transplant, you know, early are, is, is probably a good idea. But as you're older, um, there's so many new medications, discoveries and treatments that are coming um, that he doesn't recommend that. And that's what I came to the same conclusion. I, you know, I'd love to have a good kidney put in me. That'd be fantastic. Um, but I don't want to take the immunosuppressants because then you're more um, apt to um, get sick and it can be difficult. And I'm thinking of a friend of mine and um, I don't want to get emotional, but a friend of mine, uh, John Fido, he had a kidney transplant and he was on the immunosuppressants and he, you know, things went south very quickly for him and we lost him. Um, and so for me, the immunosuppressants are something I don't want to be on. Now, if I had a family member that I could get a transplant from, um, I would be more open to it, but I'm holding off. I'm hoping, and you know, I talked to, you know, like Dr. Shuvo Roy, you know, working on the bio artificial implantable kidney. Um, they are constantly making progress. They're still looking at the early 2030s, having the first version commercially available. Um, something like that is going to be a one time it gets implanted and boom, no immunosuppressants. Everything's, you know, it's doing so much for you. Um, you're not GFR 120 or anything like that, but you're doing great. You're not worrying about anemia. You're not worrying about fluid retention. You're enjoying the foods that you want to be and getting to live life um, as if your kidneys were working great for you. So that's what I'm holding out for. Getting a transplant in a few years, um, it's, it's a personal decision. And I, there is no wrong decision. It's what do you, your family, and your lifestyle do you think works best for you? And um, I'm, I wish you all the luck on whichever way you decide to go. Um, but also, if you're stage four, it depends on where you are in stage four. It, you know, once you pass a certain age, and you're in my group, um, you normally lose about one point a year, but that's not set in stone. You're not going to lose one GFR point. So you can't say, oh, I'm a 25. Um, I, I'm going to be uh, below 10 in 15 years. No, we don't know. It could be two decades before you're below 20. You, you, there is no guaranteed here's what's going to happen. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on how things are looking, how they're going. If things seem to be going downhill and you can easily get a, a, a transplant and it fits what you would like, you know, go for it. But don't do it just because you're doing a calculation and thinking, oh, I only got this many years before my kidneys get really, really bad. So now I got to do it because you may have a whole lot longer than that. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow, it's been f almost 50 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this and enjoying it as we hang out here. Um, oh, I see. Good morning from Tokyo, from Shy BB Girl. Her husband last week, Lab Phosphorus is good and potassium is good. Awesome. That is great. Um, Sandy James, can your most recent book be bought in Windsor? So... All of my books and my daughter's book, Kind Again, the youngest author in Oakland County, Michigan, one of Michigan's youngest authors. Um, and her book is was written about her experience going through the pandemic and how the world can be so much better if everyone acted like Dolly Parton. You know, she wrote this. It's a great little book, but her book and all my books can be purchased online 
from any bookstore, um, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, even Target. Uh, I don't think there is any Target anymore up in Canada, but you can get it from Amazon in Canada. Um, and Sandy, you are in Windsor. You know I'm over there all the time. Um, if you get any of my books, we will connect someday soon in Windsor, and I'll sign them for you if you'd like. It'd be great to meet you two in person. Um, and I recently convinced my coworkers in about two weeks, we are going to take a long, long lunch at work. We're going to do an offsite and we're going to all going to pile into my three row SUV and we're going to go eat lunch at the Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. We're going to cross the border, go up there, have lunch hang out a little bit, do some planning and things, and then come back over to Detroit. So that's coming up. All right. Any tips tips for getting <gasps> creatinine lower? Oh, oh, Debbie, I love this question because it's the wrong question to ask. Um, when you get kidney disease, and I this was me too. When you get it, you're like, whoa, my creatinine's going up. Creatinine's a problem. I got to get it down. I got to reduce. How can I lower it? Creatinine is not the problem. It's just one of the markers. There's another one. It starts with a C that they could use instead of creatinine. Um, that they can measure. And then there's another one that they can measure instead too. It is just a marker that when your kidneys are bad, this one's number goes up because it kind of, you're getting more and more of it in your body. So they can look at it and go, well, if it's gone up this much, the kidneys are probably only working about this much. We don't want to focus on lowering creatinine. Um, if, and here's an example, don't do this. But if someone went to the doctor, they had bad kidneys. They went to the doctor and said, doctor, I'd like you to amputate one arm and both my legs. Their creatinine would go down. Their GFR would shoot up. Did their kidneys get any better? No. They now have no legs and they're missing an arm. They'd have to use a different test because they couldn't use one with creatinine because now you have less muscle mass. So how do you lower your creatinine? Got to wipe that question from your mind. We got to say, and it's hard. I was there. I was trying everything. Now, what you can do that has a side effect of lowering creatinine, but it's only because you're reducing the burden on your kidneys, okay? So you're you're putting less of a pounding, less of a workload on your kidneys so they can do a little bit more, which has a side effect of creatinine going down, but they're not, your creatinine, you're not trying to lower your creatinine. It's just a side effect of it, um, is staying active, not smoking, getting their blood pressure. Oh, that, that should have been number one. Blood pressure under control, 120 over 80 or better. I cannot stress enough how critical that is. That's your number one thing. And if you're taking, you know, three pills and it's not lower, talk to your doctor. There's, they probably need more pills. I take one, two, three, four, eight, nine different pills. One of them I take three of. One of them. There's two of them I take two of every day. So I'm, I'm taking like a, this is like a, a, a light lunch here with my blood pressure pills. We got to get that blood pressure under control, no smoking, stay active, and eat a heart healthy diet. Those are the most important things to reduce the burden on your kidneys, which will let them better keep up with you. They're not going to work better, but now there's, you're asking less of them. So they're like, okay, Ah, I got your work done and now I'm doing a little bit of this and a little bit of this, which instead of putting it all on the back burner, they're able to keep up with you better, which will have the side effect of reducing creatinine. But you, I see this all the time. Every day I get asked so many times, how do I lower creatinine, James? What can I do to lower creatinine? And it's the wrong question. It's what can I do to take some of the burden off of my kidneys? Now, a lot of people also, kind of a question that belongs with this, 
we'll get a couple of these hellos up here on the screen, um, is what supplements should I be taking to help my kidneys? That's a place where you can do good or you can do bad. Um, you're not going to throw a pill in your mouth outside of blood pressure pills. <laughs> you're not really going to throw a supplement in your mouth and help your kidneys for the most part. We all wish there was, but that's just like someone who had their legs amputated saying, hey, what supplement do I take to regrow my legs? Our kidneys have scarring, permanent scarring. Um, and they're not clogged. They're not needing flushed or restored or cleansed. It's scarring. And there is no supplement you can add to your, you know, take in your mouth that's going to start undoing that scarring. Um, but when it comes to supplements, think of your, your diet and your health as a road. And I'm a car person, okay? So many of you have heard this um, story before. It's a road. When your diet is missing something, you start forming little potholes. You know, not enough fiber. Ooh, got a little pothole. If I'm not getting enough uh, potassium, I get a big pothole. Now, when you're driving down the freeway, do you want to hit those potholes? No. And uh, I'm in Detroit. We got them everywhere. You're like swerving like a drunk driver just to avoid potholes. You don't want to hit them because it's going to do damage. So supplements, if you can't adjust your diet, help fill in those potholes. Now, what happens if I'm taking supplements to fill in these potholes and then I keep taking them? Well, they keep filling in. Now I got speed bumps. You're driving down the freeway, going 65 miles an hour. You don't want speed bumps either. Just as bad as potholes. So when it comes to which supplements should you take, it's what supplements do you need? And your doctor or your renal dietitian or regular dietitian will let you know what supplements you need. Now, some common ones for kidney patients, vitamin D3. That's very common, especially when your, your kidney function is really low. They'll say, hey, yo, you've got potholes of vitamin D. We need some vitamin D. They'll tell you, hey, take this vitamin D with a little bit of vitamin C. Um, maybe you need a little bit of iron. So that you can fill in those potholes. But vitamin D, I was taking it for a long time. Probably about uh, three years, vitamin D every single day, quite a bit of it. Um, and I was doing good, but then my kidneys got to the point where they were good enough. I was taking out too much. I now only take the vitamin D that is included in the pro renal plus D multivitamin. I take one of those every day just cause it's, it's the basics of what you need. It's a, a renal multivitamin made by a company in, um, um, Ohio, Nephroceuticals, um, great people there. I love them. I'd always see them at all the kidney walks. They're helping, you know, support kidney disease. Um, I just take the vitamin, um, the stuff that's in there. That's all I take. So I just get whatever D3 is in there. Um, I don't take any more. And it took a long time. My vitamin D level got really elevated. And it's one of those ones that takes a long time before it comes back down and gets normal. Uh, but now my vitamin D levels are looking good without taking any real supplements. Um, Paulette says, watch, five years from now, stuff we aren't supposed to be doing will be okay. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> you got to remember, you go on YouTube, you can find the commercials of doctors telling you what cigarette they smoke and they recommend. Um but there's always research going on and people like Dr. Rosansky is always on top of it as they learn more stuff. And one of the challenges with us, especially kidney patients, is our disease is not one of the glamorous ones with lots of attention um, and lots of funding behind research. I and mean, there is funding and there is research going on, but we're not the ones that you see in the commercials where they're trying to raise money quite often. Ours isn't as glamorous, even though it impacts about 13% of people um, in the world. And nine out of 10 of those that have some type of kidney disease are not even aware of it. Um, the research in the last decade or maybe just under a decade has really started picking up. And companies like AstraZeneca are doing a ton of research 
and working on medications to help kidney patients. And I've spoken to people who are working on stuff that's coming out. They've got to, they've still got to get some F, you know, the FDA approval and all these things. And they're getting so close. They're seeing fantastic results in their, their test groups. There is a lot of stuff coming to help us. All right, Dana says, greetings from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I have not been to Oklahoma in so long. Wow. Okay, here's one. Do you ever ask your nephrologist for a complete mineral and vitamin panel? So, this is a, I don't want to, um, the problem isn't my doctors or nephrologists, it's my insurance. Um, what will they pay for? Um, and there are times they say no, um, and they'll refuse to do a test or, oh, you had that three years ago. Why do you need it again? Cause I want to get better and not need more medication and it costs you more money in the future. Um, my, my nephrologist that I've had, except for my very first, my very first one, which I didn't pick, she was given to me in the ER as the one I did not like, um, all the ones I've had after that, I interview them. When I so when I moved up here to Detroit, just almost two years ago, um, I started calling around and I was talking to the receptionist at the doctor's office. Say, hey, I'm looking for a new doctor, but I'm a little bit different. Uh, and I told him who I was. Said I got a YouTube channel. I talk about my disease publicly and what works, what doesn't work, and I need a doctor who is going to work with me um, and I'd like to interview the doctor to see if they're the right doctor for me. Remember, you're hiring the doctor and you're not gonna get a job without an interview and that's the way I would explain it. You know, you, you interviewed somebody to get the job you have right now. I wanna interview the doctor before I hire them to be my doctor. And some doctors would say, you know, they they don't have the time. Um, well, then they're off the list. That's 100% for sure. But I would interview them and I would tell them, hey, I like to get my labs when I want my labs. And what I like to do is call and say, hey, I'm going to come in and have you draw blood, do my labs, and I want to see the results. And then... We will have the appointment to discuss them, but I want to see them first so that I can put together my questions. And I tell them, I will gladly email you my questions before the appointment so you know what my questions are, what my concerns are. And I let them know, I, I can read my labs. I, I read them all the time. I've been doing it for a while. Um, so I'm not going to ask you to explain everything, but I'm going to look at it. And if I see something that's um, not where it should be, something that's too high or too low, if I can't figure out why, that's going to be a question I'm going to have for you. What could cause this? And what should I do to change it? So I interview my doctors and I find doctors that will work for me. And the only problems I've, I run into is insurance. Um, a person like me is expensive for them because I'm getting labs. Labs are not cheap. I like to get the full panels. I like to get I like to go in and get everything checked um, several times a year. And then I get my regular labs, you know, just my, my kidney function and things like that, my CBC um, more often. Um, but I like to get good labs going. Um, now I want to take a quick break because we've been here for over an hour. Welcome everyone. This is Dad Vice TV Live. We are celebrating and recognizing World Kidney Day, helping spread knowledge, spread information about kidney disease to people out there. And for um, those of you that are new, I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe. I love seeing the number go up. I do not um, have sponsors or anything here because it's it's difficult to have a sponsor. Um, not that it's difficult to find them. Believe me, they're all there's so many that are wanting to, but I only talk about products that I actually do use and that I use. And I find when there is a sponsor, um, how can you know the person's really speaking their opinion and not what the sponsor wants them to say? Um, so 
I enjoy seeing the subscription numbers go up. That's kind of like my reward. And seeing comments from people and talking to people. Um, so I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone out there. Hey, David from Jamaica. Let's see, we've got Susan. You're the best, James. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you do for us. Love your books and Dr. Rowe. Woohoo! And Jen, don't forget Jen. She's great and everyone else. And let me tell you some of the plans I have for 2024. Um, my voice is starting to go. I need to drink a little. Hold on. Can you guys believe I was shy when I was little and quiet? Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Now I'm the opposite. I could talk forever. Seems. <laughs> But uh, for 2024, here's some of the things I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to work on to get here. Um, I want to talk more about retirement, savings for retirement, because I'm, you know, early 50s. I wish I could say 40s, <laughs> especially early 40s. But retirement's not that far away for me. So I'm going to try to get some people in here to talk about retirement, how to plan for it with a chronic condition. Um, I've sat down, I spent a lot of time, I, months planning my future. Um, when can I retire? When would be best? And I realized there were so many difficult to answer questions, even going and talking to my financial advisor. Um, their answers are not appropriate for people living with chronic illness our medical costs are going to be sky high, especially you know, here in the U.S., um, where you know one of the richest countries in the world with some of the poorest health care, most expensive health care in the world. Um, we don't prioritize helping people, especially once they become seniors. Um, so I want to get some people in here to talk about, hey, Here's some tips how to plan for retirement with a chronic illness, knowing there's going to be more than the normal health care costs. Um, also, I want to get some people on here talking about traveling with chronic illnesses. Um, you know, for those that have difficulty with mobility, that's a lot of people in our audience. Um and when I talk about exercise or I have someone on here talking about exercise, there's so many people saying, hey, I have trouble doing exercises, what are recommendations? There's like water aerobics, things like that. So mobility is difficult. What about, say you want to go over to Europe and you want to spend 30 days there and something goes wrong, you need to see a doctor. What do you do? I want to have people talk about traveling to other countries and needing medical assistance. How does international um, healthcare insurance work? Diff some of the different countries, how does their healthcare system work? Um, and you guys all know I'm, I'm very fond right now of Italy. And as I've planned out my future vacation, there's going to be a lot of time in Italy. And it checks all the boxes. Healthcare emergencies, no problem. They've got their healthcare system. The international insurance, um, no problem. It's it's cheap, about six hundred dollars a year, not a month, not a week, a year. Um, you know, it's just so I want to get people in here to help us. You know, see that you know there's you know many of us may be thinking in the future, oh, you know, I'm not going to be as mobile, be able to get around as easy. I won't be able to travel and have fun and maybe you wanted you know, your bucket list is go see Rome or to go go to Heidelberg um, and things like that or go to Paris you can yeah and I want to get people in here to help us with how we do that um, so those are kind of some of my plans Plus, we'll stop Dr. Rowe I want to get an update on the implantable kidney with Dr. Shuvo Roy and there's some other doctors on here that I want to get on here. All right, let me get a few more questions before we end our live broadcast for the night. Um, how do you overcome being cold? Oh, my goodness. You're bringing back memories. You're bringing back memories. <laughs> See, these are all things that come back also when I 
as I'm working on my um, my story, my book, the the next one. Um, cold happens even today. It still happens to me. Even when your kidney functions higher, getting cold is very easy to do. Um, and for me, it just ends up being layers because I could turn the heat up, but it only go up so much and everyone else will be burning up hot and I still feel cold. When my kidneys were at the worst, my teeth would chatter. I, I was freezing all the time, but it's layers. And even at night, it's layers, lots of layers. And I'm taking layers off, putting layers on, um, and, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much how I handle being cold. Now, when he mentioned that, it reminded me of a movie. There's a, a pretty good movie about kidney disease. And hold on, I got to look up the, the title of it. I think it's one last thing. Hold on. Yes, one last thing. Um, there's some good stuff about the movie, and, and there's one huge thing I so disliked that I to me kind of was the only big negative and it kind of ruined the movie for me but it is about a woman who has kidney disease and a guy who learns he has a daughter that he didn't know about and he goes to meet the daughter and it's her um there's a few twists in the movie but uh the the actress she played Lucy was the character's name. Um, did really good at being cold all the time. She would always have layers. Even when they're inside, she you could tell her she was a little chilled at times. There were so many of the kidney symptoms when your kidneys are failing. She did an amazing job at incorporating those without being obvious into her character. Um, and other people who watched the show with me they didn't pick those things up. And I was like, oh, I can tell she's getting tired. That's the anemia. Oh, she's getting cold. I can tell that. You just, her acting was so good. So it's such a good movie for, um, that portrayed a kidney patient. Um, the one part I did not like, I won't give it away because it is a big part of the plot. But near the end, it... If you, if, if a family member of yours watched the movie, they may be hesitant to give a transplant, um, to be a donor. And that was the one thing that I really, really disliked about the movie. Okay, now wait, I'm, my wife is for some reason, her van is in the yard, in the grass. She might be stuck. She has a rear wheel drive van. And our front yard is a hill that goes down to a stream. And I see her brake lights right here just outside my window. There is no driveway there. That is all grass. It's been raining all day. She might be stuck. We'll see. If I hear mud hitting up against my windows, I'll go out there. I have the, these things to put under her tires. She gets stuck all the time. And I keep a tow rope in my car just in case. All right, let me scroll through a few more of these real quick. Sandy says, um, have to try radishes. Paulette asks, are radishes high in oxalates? It all comes down to portion control. Um, this is a great little side dish to make some of those. Um, got a plant-based diet, two thumbs up. Hello, James, hope you're well. Hey, I am doing great. Um, my doctor says I can need to lose some weight, uh, but yeah. I am doing great. Let me get to some of the most recent <laughs> comments real quick. Um, let's see. Um, check on her chain. Well, I'm watching. The, the brake lights are just sitting there. If she needs something, she'll come here or she'll call. She's very good at that. We have, she has Alexa. Oops, almost, okay, I didn't activate her. She has her the Amazon device in her car. She can just say, you know, announce and say, hey, come out here and get me. Does it all the time and it echoes all throughout the house. <laughs> um, looks like Woodruff has gave up meat a few years ago. That took quite a, okay. Deborah saying, what's the name of the movie? Deborah, it is 
one last thing. And there is a trailer you should watch it on YouTube. It is a tearjerker. And the movie is a tearjerker too. Um, it is funny and a tearjerker because it's, it's a family story. It is awesome. And let me show you real quick. There it is. One last thing came out in 2018. It's not that old. Um, here's the, the dad who discovers he has a, a, a daughter he didn't know about. And this is his daughter. And it is so funny when he goes to try to meet her. She works at a bookstore and he's at the bookstore trying to see and learn a little bit about her. But then she thinks he's some guy, a stalker, <laughs> stalking her. And it's just, oh, it's just, it's really, really funny. It's it's really good. The only negative, and, and you'll see it at, near the end, um, I wish it did more to encourage donating a kidney. All right. Sandy says, thank you, James, for all you do. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you being here. And I hope you guys all will watch that movie. Um, it was great. And I wish they would have done more for promoting it. All right. Uh, let me see what else. else. Teresa, she takes Pro Renal Plus D with the Mega. The exact same one I do. Um, now, you know what's interesting? So it's, it's a great multivitamin. It was recommended to you by my renal dietitian. Every dietitian I've ever met is aware of it. The people there are awesome. Um, I could call them up right now and say, hey, I'm going to go to a kidney walk. Can you send me some, some bottles to give away? They'd send it to me, no questions asked. Awesome, awesome people. Um, and it's very affordable and easy to get. Um, but here's what's interesting. If you don't want the omega-3, which I like it, and it doesn't add any fish taste, it's fantastic, no fish burbs. Um, if you get it without the omega-3, it is this teeny tiny little, tiny little pellet. It's like the size of an 81 milligram aspirin. It is so tiny. The the two big ones that we take with the omega-3, that's all because of the omega-3 being so, you know, that's what makes them so big. Hey, we got someone else from Toronto, Canada. Hey, I'm going to this summer, my kids and I were going to Toronto, road tripping. We loved Shit's Creek, hilarious movie. The Rosebud Motel, the CEO of the company I work at lives near that. He rides his motorcycle there. The hotel is still there, but it's set to be torn down. So we want to go see it and get some pictures there. Then we'll Photoshop Rosebud, the name of the hotel um, or motel on top of it. We want to go see all the places that Shit's Creek was um, filmed. Teresa says, James, do you eat chocolate desserts or any sweets occasionally? So definitely yes to occasionally. Um, what do I eat? So I do eat what I consider sweets. Um, yogurt. I love Greek yogurt. Um, I try, let's see, how often do I have like a chocolate candy bar or something? Gosh, it's, it's, I, I said, I would love to say I don't eat candy bars, but occasionally, and it may be, I'm, I mean, we're talking like maybe once every six months, I may have like a Hershey or something like that. My work has gigantic snack closets. Um, and even though we're automotive, we're part of Ford, um, we have snack closets like we were a startup company. You just open these giant doors and it's like a convenience store. Of all the candies and snacks and things you can imagine. And you just take whatever you want and eat it. Um, I will eat these breakfast bars, one of them. Um, I don't know what it is, but I'll eat one of those sometimes if I'm hungry. But um, I don't really eat candy bars like Kit Kat, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Oh, I loved those. Um, I'll eat something like around Halloween. Um, there was one Halloween where I was giving out candy. I love giving out the full size. I want to be the house that the kids are like, they give out the big candy bars. Don't ever 
egg their cars or egg their house or anything because they give out the awesome candy. That's what I want to be. I'm, I'm bribing the kids of the neighborhood to uh, be nice to my house and not mess up anything outside. Um, and well, I was sitting in the back of my SUV, had the, the backup. It was during COVID. It's like the second Halloween during COVID. And I was giving out candy, but there wasn't that many kids. There were so many candy bars left over. And I did eat like three or four of them while I sat in the back of the car. It was just so amazing. I was like, I had a Reese's peanut butter cups. I had a Hershey, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> um, but I really don't eat that. I don't eat donuts. I don't eat cake. Um, I don't eat pudding. I, I do eat a lot of carbs. I love hot chocolate. You know, it's, of course, it's artificial. Um, and I eat one that's low phosphorus. It has a weird taste. I've, I've gotten used to it. But every time the first few sips are like, mm, is this worth it? Um, but I've pretty much probably given up a lot of junk. I'm trying to think of, what do I, you know, my kids will leave something around. And I'll, I'll eat some of that. My weakness is we go out to eat or we make a meal and my kids don't eat that much. Um, like my son wants, you know, some some French fries and some mac and cheese and nuggets or something. And then he just eats like three nuggets and he's like, oh, I'm done. I don't want any mac and cheese or fries. Even though I told you 30 minutes ago I wanted them. And I, I just like, I'm not going to throw those away. And I end up nibbling on them and eating the mac and cheese and eating his fries. That's my problem. That's my weakness. It's not really the... Uh, um, the sweets. Oh, Petra says Heidelberg is so pretty. You def oh, I've I've been to Heidelberg. I lived in Germany in the 80s. My dad was in the Air Force. We lived in Ramstein. And we would go to Heidelberg, take school trips to Heidelberg, um, Trier, um, all play all sorts of places all throughout Central Europe. Um, I've been to Italy, Spain, France, um, Holland, Switzerland. Um, remember taking a school trip to Switzerland to ski. <laughs> oh, it's, it sounds privileged, but it wasn't, you know, it was just, Hey, that's what it was. You're in the dad's in the air force. You're in the military there. And they had awesome school trips, but I loved Heidelberg, um, running around and playing. I wish I would have understood better the history of where I was. And that's why I want to go back so bad. Um, now that I know the history of what happened. Um, and you know, when I was in Italy, yeah, seeing the Colosseum, I was like, yeah, this is a big broken building. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like, oh, I know so much more. I would really appreciate it a lot more. Um, Teresa has come to the UK, James, you know, Teresa, I had a really good friend I met online named Teresa who was in the UK and she loved hunting frogs at night. I know it sounds weird. She came to the United States once, and uh, I got to meet her, and that was great. <gasps> Deborah says she's retired Army. Go military. I, I think I've already convinced both of my kids to go into the military because um, it's just a great life. My, my parents, you know, retirement's easier for them being military. My mom has CKD stage three, and she's had back surgery. But the military pays for it, which is fantastic. Um Let's see, James, try an avocado shake with banana. Sounds good. And carbo with honey and ice in the blender. It'll take, okay, holy cow. Let me tag this one. I'm going to try this. Tastes like a Wendy's milkshake. Okay, I do occasionally have a Wendy's shake. There's a sweet that I will get. Um, when they had the peppermint one in, I thought, mm, peppermint milkshake, I don't know. I'll try it. Fell in love with it. Um, <laughs> and then I missed it when it went away. But I do like the taste of the Wendy's chocolate. Um, it I don't drink milk. because Milk just doesn't do well with my stomach. Um, but it reminds me of what I remember chocolate milk tastes like. And I haven't had a Wendy's chocolate shake in a long time. Um, but I had enough of them. That I remember it. And it, it's a very positive memory. 
Um, great tasting beer. Oh, there's my dad. Great tasting beer in Germany. Okay, that I wouldn't know. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I didn't sneak any or anything like that. <laughs> Oh, but I loved living there. It was just awesome. All the things we got to see and experience and explore and so, so many good memories there. Um, all right, guys, it has been almost an hour of a, and a half. I need to go give my voice a break. This has been wonderful hanging out. I do um, appreciate everyone out there. And remember, you know, you are appreciated you are wanted, you are loved. Um, we are all part of the same community supporting and helping each other. I look forward to a great rest of 2024. There's going to be a lot of great topics and discussions coming up here. And, you know, if you haven't subscribed and you know, a large number of the viewers are not subscribers, but subscribing helps me get people on. Because if I could say, hey, you know, doctor, I want you to come on and talk about this research you've done or something like that. I've got a quarter of a million subscribers. Something like that gets them to go, like, mm, maybe I will do this. Come and talk to James for free. Sandy says, have a Wendy's treat shake tomorrow for a treat. So Sandy, you know what I'll probably do? My kids want to go back up to Windsor, Canada this weekend. We didn't go last week. We went the weekend before and I Probably. Oh, my wife. My Deborah says, check on your wife. My wife is okay. I saw her leave. <laughs> She's there for a long time. But we're probably going to go up to Canada this Saturday. And I will have a windy shake up there. Because um, so much of the food has less. Uh, the United States, we just load with chemicals. They're like, hey, we put these chemicals in there. It'll save us a nickel. And it extends the shelf life um, from one day to three weeks. So we just load things up with chemicals that aren't good with us. Up in Canada, so many of these chemicals are banned. Um, it is just so funny when you, you go up there and you're like, um, you want, you look at a bag of Cheetos. You're like, that's not the right color of Cheetos. Then you look at ours and you're like, wait, that color isn't natural. In the United <laughs> How did the United States get that color? Um, and I'm sure the Wendy's is a little better. Oh, and another weakness of mine. It's not a, it's not a sweet poutine. Anyone who has not gone to Canada and had poutine, it's French fries, gravy, and cheese curds. It may not sound great. Oh my goodness. Me, my kids, they all love my, my son loves getting butter chicken on top of his poutine. <laughs> I get like onions and things like that on mine. All right. Anyway, I'm getting a little hungry. Uh, time for me to take my medicine and get to bed soon. But it has been great having you all here. Um, I appreciate if you could subscribe. That'd be fantastic. Check out that movie, One Last Thing. If you haven't seen it, get you some tissues. You know, be prepared for it. It is a really, you know, you're going to laugh. You're going to get teary. Um, and it does have a good ending. I, you know, I don't want to ruin it for people are like, oh, James said he didn't like how they positioned um uh, being a kidney donor. Um, but once you watch it, you'll understand like, oh, they could have changed a, one small change and helped the kidney community even more by uh, better promoting the importance of being a donor. All right. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. And this is, you know, World Kidney Day. I'll be back here on the 27th with Dr. Rosansky. And next year, we will do another hangout like this. Plus, from time to time, as things slow down here at work, we'll be doing these random hangouts on the weekend. I'll just come online, hop up, and we'll just chat about stuff. All right, thank you all so much, and have a wonderful rest of your month. Bye, everyone.